monsoon, unofficial reports surfaced that India had threatened to withhold aid. The Maldivian finance minister also admitting government salaries would be hit. The government also announced austerity measures and lenders soon demanded compensation of up to $400 million. But then the surf was up for the government. The Singapore Court of Appeals ruled that the Maldives was right to take over the airport. Legal battles for compensation continue. Ma'am, the question that you've answered very often that is still in litigation, the question of compensation. There are reports that you have at some forum suggested that that figure is 700 million. That is that true? It could rise up to 700 million. That doesn't mean it is the same now. Uh, it all depends on what the legal arguments are. We've come out to say the agreement is void ab in nature. The Singapore uh, High, uh, uh, Court of Appeals decision yesterday had said even if it is not void ab in nature, it could still be expropriation. That means we will also be again limiting our damages. My challenge here now is we will be minimizing our, who knows the, whether we have to even pay damages. So you're saying whatever the, the final figure that is reached, uh, yeah. the government of Maldives would uh, pay that and would be able to pay that? Yeah, you're doubting us, is it? Don't, don't doubt us. Uh, don't doubt us, our capabilities. So when you're saying it's void ab initio yeah. from the beginning, yeah. uh, why did it take so long to terminate? Uh, I, I would refrain from giving uh, giving out to you my legal arguments for the arbitral tribunal. GMR gave in to the inevitability of its exit after initially being defined. Of course, the legal process and word of law is not honoured and uh, use of force is done. All I can say is that it is very unfortunate and uh, this will impact international investment, in investor climate. It is also, I think, going to be a... Uh, use of force against Indian interests. At $500 million, the deal was the largest foreign direct investment in the Maldives. With the deal scrapped, $240 million that GMR has invested so far in the project is at stake. Though the equity contribution from the consortium is $30 million, the company has drawn as much as $90 million in debt from Axis Bank and Indian Overseas Bank. The remaining $120 million worth of investment has been made through internal accruals from operations of the airport. The contract signed under former President Nasheed's regime was a revenue sharing arrangement. 1% in 2014, 10% after that and 15% and 27% revenue sharing on fuel. The contract allowed GMR to charge an airport development fee. Passengers in Delhi, also run by GMR, will know how that lightens their purses. The issue went to court in Male, which in late 2001 struck down the fee as illegal. The Majlis, the Maldivian parliament, played hardball, opposing the president on the deal. Then President Nasheed used his powers to clear it. He also allowed GMR to set off its revenue share against the fee that might have been collected. The Maldives government claims the consequences became crystal clear in the first quarter of 2012. The government's revenue share was reduced from $8.7 million to $0.5 million after setting off the airport fee. By the second quarter, the Maldives, instead of receiving revenue share, was asked to pay $1.5 million. The bill climbed further in the third quarter, totaling $3.5 million. The government's claim is that far from receiving an expected $1 billion, it might end up paying massive sums to GMR over the 25-year period of the contract, extendable by 10 years. So the economic logic says the government was to scrap the deal. The man who pushed through the contract, former President Nasheed, disagrees. Do you see it? Does your party, do your supporters and even the normal people who support you see this as a measure that has been taken against a decision that you took? I mean, certainly this was, uh, this was you know, a, a, a rhetoric that they have built uh, and they built this into a package uh, to include ultranationalism, uh, religious bigotry, racism uh, and these are sentiments that you can play in most societies. Uh, uh, more underdeveloped, the, the, the easier it becomes. So Maldives is not any different from any other society. Um, if you have uh, politicians who are willing to do that, uh, these things can easily be done. Again, it seems like uh, when we hear the foreign minister, he says that India doesn't 
want to be seen as showing or flexing its muscle in the neighborhood well you know um, you cannot uh, you cannot be a leader without being decisive um, um, you must um, come out and stick your neck out at instances the waters may be still but the air is heavy and humid with inevitability inevitability because the highest court in singapore has allowed the maldivian government to take over the gmr run international terminal there were weeks of legal wrangling that followed months of political and economic protests after all the maldives goes to the polls next year and the plank is economic nationalism jobs and money for maldivians as well as some would say religious extremism the journey for gmr may be long across these waters but the question is how choppy will the seas be for the maldives since gmr was the country's largest foreign direct investor at 500 million dollars <laughs> अच्छा एक बात बताऊं ये टर्म एंड कंडीशन द मॉलीज आर शेड्यूल टू गो टू पोल्स नेक्स्ट ईयर दैट्स इफ कॉज इफ एवरीथिंग इज अंडर शेड्यूल but the former president mohammed nasheed who was the country's first democratically elected president is going ahead with his campaign to return to power he started off his campaign in september in the south of the country visiting the islands there one by one and now he's almost reached the northernmost island in the maldives as he continues his campaign into the future but the question is who will be captaining the ship of the maldives and what kind of waters will it be charting Ex President Nasheed has been on a packed campaign island to island almost a year before scheduled elections. His flotilla of fishing trawlers or dhonis has been traveling from the south from Addu to Male to Hanimadu to Horafshi and then to the northernmost island of Uleguma. And we are on the last leg of this trip with him. boats nearly 200 people are traveling on are donies a dhow like plank based craft traditionally built with coconut wood it also has a kerala connection doni after all is a small boat in malayalam <laughs> The island president as he's also known because of his fight against global warming he has a traditional coconut welcome on Horafshi which has a population of about 4000 his is an american presidential style campaign energetic brisk walking pumping hands posing for photographs holding babies and chatting with voters <laughs> Soon in Uleguma which has a population of just 43 the boruberu drums are out and so are the dancing shoes with a star campaigner in the thick of the feverish celebrations Boruberu is a traditional bamboo wood drum with a stingray hide skin and apart from the locals our ship's captain turns out to also be an expert percussionist campaign is called the journey of pledges and is a door to door movement to educate the voters on what his party the maldivian democratic party a center rightist outfit implemented when they were in power the tempo of both the dancers and the campaign increasing with some deft footwork president nasheed is campaigning so early he says because he fears either being arrested or being disqualified from the polls He is accused of constitutional impropriety in arresting a top judge last year. That triggered off protest from the opposition which is now in power in a coalition with his then vice president Wahid Manik. The former president has now sounded the revolutionary bugle calling for a popular uprising. He is doing amazing things now playing India against China in the motives. I mean uh, uh, you can't be more daring than that. A daring in the negative sense in I believe. Yes, of course in the negative sense. You don't work a country on the brink. Uh, um you you kind of do a safe thing. It, it's only um uh, um less than 18 hours away. <laughs> You're correct. Uh, and and this is the furthest northern island. Yeah. 
uh, and we must be connected to India. We must be connected to India. I mean, India's, in Indian development, we must be able to plug into all that rapid growth in India. And we can be plugged into it. And these islands can develop. So, the waters are calm today, but the days and weeks and months ahead, do you see them to be extremely choppy? Or it, 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 uh, do you think uh, you can uh, still uh, chart uh, through the, them? The, this is the lull before the storm. This is the north on one of 1,090 of Maldives Islands. India has had traditional security cooperation with the country and that has increased with cooperation in anti-terrorism and anti-piracy adding to the already existing naval and coast guard as well as surveillance presence. But the question being asked, is India prepared for Beijing extending its footprint into this region? There are already those who subscribe to the string of pearls theory with Beijing extending its presence from the South China Sea all across India. But now, is there a new great game being played in the Maldives? I think they, they think that we are in an extremely brilliant position to balance uh, various, cards. Uh, uh, various cards and, and to, to play one power against the other. Mm, they, uh, there is a view here that we can maintain a balance of power. Uh, but I, 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 I don't see that. I think that's a recipe for disaster. But do you see them playing that game of a balance of power? Do you think the current regime is moving towards? They, certainly. So they, they are certainly doing it. It's a very daring game. Um, that brings all our people to risk. Um, uh, uh, I, I just simply hope and wish that they would be more mindful about the people and not just simply on their power. NDTV's attempts to speak to current President Wahid were turned down. We have very but when we interviewed him earlier this year, India. he tried to so play down the China card. They were worries that uh, if there was a vacuum, China could step in and you were possibly moving in that direction, in your government? No, no, I think uh, there's no, uh, no real chance because uh, our re close relationship with India uh, has been there for quite some time. And, uh, you know, we have a preferential uh, relationship as our uh, closest uh, neighbor. Uh, and so this is uh, not a concern that Indians should be worried about. Of course, like all the other countries, um, you know, we are also looking at trade and commercial relationships with China. Uh, China is the fastest growing country in the world, a uh, huge market. Uh, it's also where most of our tourists are coming from now. So we have to have good relations with China. Um, we will have, of course, more um, delegations going to China in the future to promote tourism and commerce. Uh, we have good relations with them. But, you know, as mature uh, countries, uh, we can deal with that. The Chinese have already expressed an interest in acquiring an island for a resort. Chinese tourists account for 22% of the country's total foreign travelers. In contrast, Indian tourists are only about 3%. Though the president has denied reports, a China connection is also doing the rounds for a replacement to GMR in the airport deal. In fact, the handover turned so bitter that there was no GMR representative at the ceremony. I don't uh, find any uh, necessity for them to be here now anymore. We'll be working very closely with them uh, to have a, true, uh, have a very smooth transition uh, of the, uh, the other phases that we're going to conduct in the future. India, analysts say, has been caught between two stools. While New Delhi says one can't equate the government of India, GOI, with GMR, the foreign ministry has reportedly sent some strong signals. We don't want this to spill over and become a political issue in Maldives that causes damage to our relationship. Because this is not a political issue. It is a commercial issue. This is what they've told us. It's a legal issue. That's what they've told us. But, you know, if there is somebody going to whip up anti-Indian feeling because a disagreement has taken place between the Ministry of Finance and, and the GMR is a, on, 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 on what the commercial and legal consequences should be, then that would be unacceptable. Unacceptable is a word that fits both antagonists' lexicon. Everything political in the Maldives is literally a President Wahid versus President Nasheed issue. The genesis goes back to February when there was a controversial change of regime. President Nasheed, who was arrested and manhandled by security forces, claims he was ousted in a coup at virtual gunpoint. President Wahid, who took over after the public resignation of his predecessor, was cleared by an international committee of any unconstitutionality. The 
difference between the two is a contrast between day and night. While pro Nasheed supporters demonstrate for FDI, elections, and justice in Malay, Islamist parties slam him and GMR. But it's not all political. The two rallies punctuated with a concert by a Bangladeshi band in the center of the capital. Mohammed Nasheed had made headlines, among other things, for holding the first ever underwater cabinet meeting to highlight the danger his country faced from global warming. But is the danger now even more ever present? Danger of the country being swamped in egotistical political battles and religious fundamentalism. So can and will the Maldives chart its own democratic course, or will it turn the clock back? And who will be propelled into the forefront, and who will be left in the distant background?